I'm here with Mohsen Busavi, and he is the visual effects uh, supervisor for Game of Thrones, uh, which uh, has earned him an Emmy nomination for the Bells episode in its final season. Uh, Busavi, what surprised you most about the final season of the show? It's epic. I mean, the scope is so huge. Like, it's really, when you say never seen on the screen, especially on a, on a TV episodic program, it is really true. You have uh, Battle of Winterfell, which is uh, one of the longest battle ever seen on the screen, as well as you have the Battle of King's Landing, which is the same scenario. I think what was really, really interesting about the season eight was again the scope, but also a lot of variety of setting. So we, as a, sort of a visual effects uh, company, were able to play around with and um, sort of it was very fun to get into all of these different settings from recreation of Digital King's Landing to the very iconic um, aftermath of the King's Landing in episode six, as well as dream come true. <laughs> The sequence with uh, melting the Iron Throne and uh, the you know the death of Danny. Um, in, I mean, this is one of those rare projects where you know the entire team is so excited to work on it. The entire team is so motivated to work on it. I mean, not that we're not motivated on the other projects, but at the same time, there's like a whole different set of um, interest and a set of dedication that I have felt within my team at the Scanline to tackle Game of Thrones. So yeah, certainly it was an extremely rewarding and entertaining uh, process. You'd worked on the show before. Um, how did you feel coming sort of back for the final three episodes? Yeah, so back in season two, I was involved with the final episode of the season two, the Battle of Blackwater. And I was involved there in a different company in Germany, slightly in a different capacity, was more in a consulting capacity. And I believe this was uh, one of the very first uh, sort of um, high production value, or large, um, sort of expensive looking uh, sequences that was done in Game of Thrones. And uh, I got involved in a consulting capacity to make sure that it, it it's as, as best as it can get. And I work with uh, Steve Callback, who was, um, as of season two, all the way to the uh, season eight, was a visual effects producer on the HBO side. Uh, I had some uh, previous collaboration with him on Roland Emmerich's uh, 2012. So we worked together and he was my visual effects producer. So we sort of got along very well. And later when I joined Scanline, the Korean company, uh, Scanline worked on the finale of the episode uh, of season uh, four, the finale of season four. I wasn't involved directly. I was helming a different project. Um, and then after that, we were looking uh, to basically get involved with Game of Thrones on a much larger scope and uh, season eight seemed to be a very good fit for the company. So that's how we sort of got connected to, to Game of Thrones. This year, how did you find out you were an Emmy nominee? And I believe it's your first Emmy nomination. That is correct. Um, <laughs> so after we wrap up the show, I took a long vacation and uh, and the night before, we were out in the mountains with my family, and we were hiking and camping. And we came back very exhausted, and I sort of forgot about the announcement day. So in the morning, um, I'm uh, taking a shower, and suddenly my wife screams, <laughs> out of happiness. <laughs> and I thought, I thought the house went on fire or something. So I took a towel, I ran out, and. Uh, and she mentioned that, hey, the nomination is out and your name is there. I mean, it, it's very surreal. Um, you don't do the work because of this. You do the work because of all of the challenges and all of the very interesting experience that you have throughout the months. Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously it's very rewarding to, to be recognized. Also to be recognized with, you know, this incredible group of people who, um, 
sort of dedicated their the time to Game of Thrones season eight, uh, as well as Joe Bauer, who was the um, visual effects supervisors on the HBO side, Steve Callback, and uh, the other um, visual effects supervisors from the other vendors. So very, very, very pleased to to be part of that team. Mm. And this season, Game of Thrones scored a uh, record number of nominations that a show's gotten for a single season. What do you think was special about the show? You know, I think Game of Thrones, uh, before even it was um, an amazing hit as a TV series, um, obviously it was a very successful set of books very similar to the Lord of the Rings series. And uh, so, you know, when it became a TV series, it uh, sort of followed the same legacy in terms of connecting to the audiences. I think it goes into two different levels. One is the story and the narrative, and one is uh, the visuals. Now, the story, I think, you know, you have these amazing characters, you have this amazing cast, uh, and uh, what is really interesting about it is, um, you know, within every episode, you sort of have that ongoing frustration of the story in terms of you keep, you know, you keep looking for the good to win, <laughs> if that makes sense, and uh, and constantly that gets postponed it. Uh, and you as an audience, you're, you're very curious about what's going to happen next. I mean, they have they have made some, some very, very, very brave choices in Game of Thrones that uh, is is very um, untypical in in the sort of conventional TV, where you sort of know what's going to happen and you serve the audiences. And I think in Game of Thrones, they have been very, very, um, um, very straight about making sure that uh, they're serving the story and making sure that it sort of keeps the interest all the way through. And, you know, it has a, a very complex narrative and characters, and many sort of resonate with that and really like that sort of thing. It, it has this very clever use of violence that uh, you also see with the audiences who like uh, films from Tarantino, which sort of has the same same uh, same um, aspect. Now, this is in terms of narrative, but I think also in terms of visuals, Game of Thrones, as, as we know, has has made this legacy of just incredible craft on a TV scope that has put on the screen. I mean, not only on the visual effects side, mm -hmm. but uh, across the board, you know, um, on set and everyone who has been involved, they have really put their best. And that combined with, with the amazing story, you have this, this beautiful world, this really interesting world that they can resonate with. I mean, if you think about it, you have uh, fire breathing, you know, dragons, and you have a lot of magic. And, but even though you have all of these mythical creatures and you know it's not real, it has been set in a, in, a, in, a, in a way that it does feel like a bit of a documentary sometimes, you know? And you feel very connected to it. You feel very, um, you know, it's very easy to understand the world. And it seems almost it's a historical event that happened and you're sort of following with the camera. Mm. Yeah, and you were nominated for the Bells episode. Uh, what was the most challenging thing for you in putting together uh, that? Uh, yeah. Right. So I think I think the the biggest challenge on the episode five was the scope of it, and we had uh, various different technical challenges that uh, we sort of went through through the episode five. Uh, but, you know, I think it started with uh, with recreation of King's Landing, a digital version of King's Landing. Now, if you look at the previous seasons of Game of Thrones, they shot all of the establishing shots and all of the sort of major shots of King's Landing in a city called Dubrovnik in Croatia. So they had a lot of practical material to work with. In season eight, because of the complexity of the story and the fact that we were supposed to sort of destroy King's Landing and then in episode six, sort of look at the aftermath of King's Landing. But also you have this huge city now becoming a major character in episode five. It's not anymore a background uh, to support the foreground. It's the main character, one of the main characters in the episode five. Now, um, we sort of recreated the entire King's Landing 
fully digitally, uh, fully uh, you know, modeled based on a lot of interesting material we got from Croatia and uh, Dubrovnik because they wanted to make sure that the feel and the language of the city is similar to what they have already established in in uh, previous seasons. You have shots where Danny's sitting on the on uh, one of the King's Landing's wall, sort of looking at Red Keep, and then you have Cersei's in Red Keep looking at the city from a different angle. At the same time, you have John and Arya in the streets of King's Landing. So you're looking at this this beautiful city that is getting destroyed from all different angles, and to make sure that you're establishing this fully digital environment again on the TV scope and making sure that it is consistent across the board, uh, that was very challenging. And then at the same time, we had uh, you know the iconic shots of uh, destroying Red Key. Now again, you're looking at this castle that you have seen for over 70 episodes in the previous seasons. And um, you, you want to make sure that uh, you're doing justice to the way it looks, because that's sort of the last chance to put it on the screen. And we spent a lot of time making sure that that looks right and that has um, sort of all the upgrades it needs. Now, we sort of did Red Keep based on what was established in the previous season, but did an upgrade to make it more detailed and uh, sort of crafted for this massive amount of destruction mm. from all different angles. Um, yeah, as well as uh, I, think, uh, I think the third biggest challenge is um, we had this shots of Arya running through the streets of King's Landing. And uh, originally, it was meant to be a very long sort of one take sequence, like five, six minutes. And in the final um, screening version of it, it, it uh, sort of was cut into two, three different shots. But when we worked on it, we were dealing with a very long one take shots. Um, yeah. I believe it was four and a half minute and one of the shots that we work on. So four and a half minute, you have digital extension. They shot everything with a very clean set. So we added a lot of atmospherics. And the idea was to sort of make it look like the 9-11 aftermath in terms of the visibility. So you sort of barely can see three meter in front of you. And mm -hmm. that done on uh, a four and a half minute with destruction and a dragon flying by and a lot going on around Arya that was an extremely difficult challenge to, to work with. Mm. Uh, yeah, people were so mad at uh, Danny and the dragons for destroying uh, destroying King's Landing. It was really you that, had des that destroyed yeah. King's Landing, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, what, uh, do you have a favorite scene from that episode or a, frame it, a favorite shot that you put together for it? I think from, from the bell, there is this shot where the camera is behind Danny. And it's like when Danny is sitting on the, on the tower and the camera is behind Danny, we do this uh, 360 uh, camera move. Danny is sitting on the dragon and she's looking at the city and Red Keep is stuck with Danny. We pan across. We have uh, the beautiful scales and the neck of the dragon in the foreground and Danny holding to it. And we pan with Danny and the camera and we see Red Keep in the background. Uh, I thought that was that was a beautiful to stay shot um, in terms of the composition of the camera in episode five. You know, I thought that was that was that was very beautiful. Yeah, uh, in a show where there's dragons and torching a, a city and all those sorts of things, um, like it's sort of obvious some of the special effects achievements uh, that you've made. Uh, what's an effect that you're proud of that might have otherwise gone unnoticed? Yeah, I think as you mentioned, a lot of notice went to episode five, also after the Emmy nomination. But I think um, visually, what I enjoyed the most was the the aftermath of the King's Landing in episode six. You have the sequence where Danny walks on the stage on the staircase and basically gives a speech to all Goth Rockies and Ansolites. And um, so, what what we needed to do there was to sort of create an aftermath that uh, sort of um, gave us um, some connection to what you have seen before from the post-war documentaries. We got some references from the 
uh, Dresden bombing after the Second World War. And the idea was to sort of capture that sense of devastation and that sense of uh, destruction that sort of also um, separates the background from the foreground. So you have Danny in the foreground sort of giving this victorious speech, but at the same time, you have this devastated city, but you have seen, you know, for the past, again, 70 episodes, 70 plus episodes, and now you sort of see its ruins. And uh, now again, the idea was to so, sort of make this background uh, in terms of the tone and the characteristics as monochromatic as we can to sort of connect to that black and white documentary style that sort of everyone has seen from a, from a sort of post-war documentary footage. And, you know, and on the techn technological side, a lot of uh, new innovations and new methodology went into creating that fully digital damage aftermath of King's Landing that, uh, you know, I thought it didn't necessarily get a lot of attention. That was one aspect, but also in episode five, um, the throne melt sequence, which was something that we actually started on early on. That was the first sequence that we got from HBO to work on back in March 2018. Wow. And wow. the first thing we worked on, and that was one of the things that we wrapped and we finalized in April 2019, so towards the end of the delivery of the um, episode six, and that was very, very fun and challenging to work on. I mean, if you uh, if you get told that, hey, you're going to work on destroying the Iron Throne with a dragon, melting it, uh, it's just a very, very beautiful setting in terms of lighting, and, um, and it, it, it was very fun to develop that sequence, and that's having that as the first thing to work on, I think it sort of motivated everyone to to move on and uh, sort of get even more energy for the rest of the sequences that we work on. Well, Mosin, uh, thank you so much for talking with us today about uh, Game of Thrones and about the Emmy nominations. Uh, all the best for the awards. And uh, for people who have watched this interview, you can go to goldderby.com to make uh, your own awards predictions. You can predict in all the different categories and things like that and compete against some of the leading experts, editors, and prognosticators on the web. Thank you so much.